Hi everyone, welcome back to Alice in the Giant Bookshelf and welcome to my very first attempt at Poetry Thursday. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name's Alice and I have way too many books. So today is Poetry Thursday and I've never ever participated in Poetry Thursday but I was inspired to by a poem that I read last week and I, I was inspired to read it by a very different read which is Agatha Christie. This Agatha Christie book which I read this month is called The Mirror Cracked From Side To Side which is a famous line from a poem. Before the opening chapter of the book we see a quote from said poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson out through the web and floated wide, the mirror cracked from side to side, the curses come upon me, cried the Lady of Shalott. A large part of this mystery plot hinges on a look of doom or the look of the curse coming upon them that happens to an actress at a party. And although I've read the poem Concerned before, I was inspired to read it again and I actually found out some interesting information on the internet about it. So, the Lady of Shalott is a lyrical ballad that is by Alfred Lord Tennyson. It's quite a famous poem because it inspired um, several pictures by the Pre-Raphaelites. And it turns out that there are two versions of this poem. One was published in 1833 and had 20 stanzas. And one was published later in 1842 with 19 stanzas. And the second version has a different ending, which was considered more in keeping with Victorian morals, apparently. I thought I would read you the Victorian version as it's Poetry Thursday and it's Victober. So here's my attempt at reading you The Lady of Shalott by Alfred Lord Tennyson. On either side the river lie, long fields of barley and of rye, that clothe the wold and meet the sky, and through the field the road runs by to many towered Camelot. And up and down the people go, gazing where the lilies blow, round an island there below, the island of Shalott. Willows whiten, aspens quiver, little breezes dusk and shiver, through the waves that runs for ever, by the island in the river, flowing down to Camelot. Four grey walls and four grey towers overlook a space of flowers, and the silent isle embowers the Lady of Shalott. By the margin willow veiled, slide the heavy barges trailed by slow horses, and unhailed, the shallop flitteth silken sailed, skimming down to Camelot. But who hath seen her wave her hand, or at the casement seen her stand? Or is she known in all the land, the Lady of Shalott? Only reapers reaping early, in among the bearded barley, hear a song that echoes cheerly, from the river winding clearly, down to towered Camelot. And by the moon the reaper weary, piling sheaves in uplands airy, listening whispers, tis the fairy, Lady of Shalott. There she weaves by night and day, a magic web with colours gay. She has heard a whisper say, a curse is on her if she stay to look down to Camelot. She knows not what the curse may be, and so she weaveth steadily, and little other care hath she, the Lady of Shalott. And moving through a mirror clear, that hangs before her all the year, shadows of the world appear. There she sees the highway near, winding down to Camelot. There the river eddy whirls, and there the surly village churls, and the red cloaks of market girls pass onward from Shalott. Sometimes a troop of damsels glad, an abbot on an ambling pad, sometimes a curly shepherd lad, or long-haired page in crimson clad, goes by to towered Camelot. And sometimes through the mirror blue, the knights come riding two and two. She hath no loyal knight and true, the Lady of Shalott. But in her web she still delights to weave the mirror's magic sights, for often through the silent nights a funeral with plumes and lights and music went to Camelot. Or when the moon was overhead came two young lovers lately wed. I am half sick of shadows, said the Lady of Shalott. A bow shot from her bower eaves, he rode between the barley sheaves, the sun came dazzling through the leaves, and flamed upon the brazen greaves of bold Sir Lancelot. 
a red cross knight forever kneeled to a lady in his shield that sparkled on the yellow field beside remote Shalott. The gemmy bridle glittered free, like to some branch of stars we see, hung in the golden galaxy. The bridle bells rang merrily as he rode down to Camelot. And from his blazoned baldric slung, a mighty silver bugle hung, and as he rode his armour rung beside remote Shalott. All in the blue unclouded weather, thick jewels shone the saddle leather, the helmet and the helmet feather burned like one burning flame together as he rode down to Camelot. As often through the purple night, below the starry clusters bright, some bearded meteor trailing light moves over still Shalott. His broad clear brow in sunlight glowed, on burnished hooves his war horse trode, from underneath his helmet flowed, his coal black curls as on he rode, as he rode down to Camelot. From the banks and from the river, he flashed into the crystal mirror, Tira lira by the river, sang Sir Lancelot. She left the web, she left the loom, she made three paces through the room. She saw the water lily bloom, she saw the helmet and the plume. She looked down to Camelot. Out flew the web and floated wide, the mirror cracked from side to side. The curse is come upon me, cried the Lady of Shalott. In the stormy east wind straining, the pale yellow woods were waning, the broad stream in his banks complaining, heavily in low sky raining over towered Camelot. Down she came and found a boat, beneath a willow left afloat, and round about the prow she wrote, the Lady of Shalott. And down the river's dim expanse, like some bold seer in a trance, seeing all his own mischance, with a glassy countenance, did she look to Camelot. And at the closing of the day, she loosed the chain and down she lay. The broad stream bore her far away, the Lady of Shalott. Lying robed in snowy white, that loosely flew from left to right, the leaves upon her falling light, through the noises of the night, she floated down to Camelot. And as the boat head wound along, the willowy hills and fields among, they heard her singing her last song, the Lady of Shalott heard a carol, mournful, holy, chanted loudly, chanted lowly, till her blood was frozen slowly, and her eyes were darkened wholly, turned to towered Camelot. For ere she reached upon the tide, the first house by the waterside, singing in her song, she died, the Lady of Shalott. Under tower and balcony, by garden wall and gallery, a gleaming shape she floated by, dead pale between the houses high, silent into Camelot. Out upon the wharfs they came, knight and burgher, lord and dame, and round the prow they read her name, the Lady of Shalott. Who is this, and what is here? And in the lighted palace near, died the sound of royal cheer, and they crossed themselves for fear, all the knights at Camelot. But Lancelot mused a little space, he said, she has a lovely face. God in his mercy lend her grace, the Lady of Shalott. So that was The Lady of Shalott by Lord Alfred Tennyson. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed my first Poetry Thursday. Um, please do give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all again soon in another video all about books here on Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.